There are three options for taking bite wings. The first is the XCP or Extension Cone Paralleling Device, which improves accuracy by implementing a positioning ring to help aim the X-ray cone. The second option are bite tabs. These are used in areas where a patient does not tolerate the XCP, cannot fit it, and to reduce horizontal overlap. The final option are sticky tabs. These are disposable bite tabs for vertical or horizontal bite wings. This is the Bite Wing XCP Rin Kit. This is for taking all of the bite wings. We're going to take the straight stick and we're going to place the bite block on it. Now the bite block goes on that the biting portion comes towards the end of the stick. That this holder part of the x-ray is going to be more towards the end of the stick. So we're going to take our x-ray and this is the side that is the cheek side, the white side of the x-ray, not the opening side. I want to make sure that my dot, either every time I take a, a bite wing, that it's either at the bottom or that it's at the top. And that's just personal preference, however you want to do it. And I'm just going to place this inside. Then my ring will go on. And you can see that it all lines up perfectly. So I want this to line up like that and I can use this on either side. Let's go over to Dexter and place it. When we're taking a posterior bite wing, we're going to put this in our patient's mouth and we're going to place it far enough back and our patient is going to bite on the bite block part and we want to make sure that we get the contact of the distal of the five and the mesial of the six. So we want to place this so that we're going to have the edge of the x-ray coming almost to the mesial of the five and we're going to get our patient to bite together and we're going to slide the ring in. Then again we'll take our PID and we're going to line it up so that we're parallel with the ring and take the x-ray. The bite wing XCP consists of three components the bite block, the ring, and the indicator arm. The bite block or receptor holds the SP plate or film in place. The aiming ring helps to align the X-ray beam to the bite block. Holding both of these components together is the indicator arm which connects the holder to the aligning ring and establishes vertical and horizontal beam geometry. To assemble the bite wing XCP holder, we take the indicator arm, we slide the aiming ring with the ring facing the same direction as the prongs, we take the receptor holder Down. and we slide it into the pins. We make sure 
that where the film is going to be positioned is away from the rings. In order to place the plate, we make sure the smooth side is facing the aiming ring. When checking your assembly, make sure you can see the smooth side of the plate centered in the ring. Now we'll go over how to use the Bitewing XCP film holder. And so what you want to do is take the metal rod, assemble, takes two prongs, put it into the bite block here. And so you want this bite block to face out this little these little slots to face out this way and then put the ring on so that you can see the bite block. Most common misconfiguration is to put this this way and then you can almost fit it in the patient's mouth and I've seen people do it but it's it minimizes your chances of getting a good image. Alright and then let's take a photosimulable phosphor plate, a PSP plate, put it in here and then you would expose the bite wing this way. Patient would bite. And the good thing about the red film holder, unlike the yellow one, is you don't have to change it uh, from side to side. The configuration stays the same. Just change the film for each side. And so that this is using the horizontal bite wing. There is also a vertical attachment this way and sometimes if you want to see more of the bone levels on the teeth you would do a vertical bite wing. Usually um, often it's requested by periodontists and so you put it in this way. Same way as the horizontal except it's uh, now obviously vertical. And with this particular bite block it's so it's a adapted it's an adapted one for PSP plates. There are two slots if you can see in here. A wider one we use already for the PSP plate and the traditional size one is for the regular film, which can also be used. The apparatus for a horizontal bite wing image should be placed between the tongue and the teeth with the tab resting on the teeth. As the patient closes, open the door, swinging the apparatus toward the lateral incisor. If using a wired sensor, then move the cord toward the opposing cheek. And make sure that the tab is placed in the center of the sensor. Make sure that the cord follows the parallel arm. We're going to place this in the patient's mouth, give the patient a fish hook so that we can see what we're doing, place the sensor between the tongue and the teeth, move the wire to the other side so that we can get a good visibility and see into the patient's mouth. And then right before the patient closes, we're going to swing the front edge of the sensor toward the middle of the mouth to follow the curve of speed and make sure that we break open the contacts in the bite wing. As the patient's closing to pressure on their back teeth, we're gonna make sure that we put our index finger under the patient's lips and push so that the patient is in centric occlusion. And for every single image, we're gonna make sure that the ring is against the patient's face and that the cone is up against the ring. And the cone and the metal arm are parallel. Now we're ready to take our shot.
When placing the sensor for vertical bite wings, it should be rolled into a vertical position once past the incisors. If using a standard sensor, hold the cable down with a finger so that it is out of the way while placing the sensor. Make sure the cone of the x-ray source is parallel to the arm of the holder and directed at the center of the aiming ring. For patients who are overly sensitive, foam cushions are available that are specifically made for use with sensors and can make placement more comfortable. The wing tab is placed directly in the middle of the sensor, with the cable always facing to the palate. For this shot, we have the patient open wide, resting the sensor horizontally on the lower jaw, using the ring to rotate the sensor like a steering wheel into the mouth, with the cable towards the palate. Have the patient close gently as you open the door to open the contacts. Bring the ring to the face and bring the cone in full circumference with the ring. We're here today to talk about bite wing x-rays. Good bite wings are important. It may be five to seven years or more between full mouth series, and patients rely on us to manage disease and health in this time interval. To properly detect caries and periodontal disease, it is essential to capture open contacts between teeth and maxillary and mandibular bone levels. This is easier said than done, of course, Every year, our radiology faculty and staff assist students in obtaining the best possible bite wing x-rays for their test cases and board exams. We're sharing some of our techniques with you on this video. I'm Dr. Lola Giusti, coordinator of radiology services at Arthur A. Dagoni School of Dentistry in San Francisco. One of the things I see students doing quite frequently is placing the x-ray sensor or film in such a way that it is not aligned with the arch. It should be parallel with the lingual surfaces of the teeth so that the x-ray beam is perpendicular to the sensor. Another way of saying the same thing is that the beam should come through the contacts of the teeth 90 degrees to the sensor. You will notice that the sensor is oriented quite differently for the premolar and molar images. Basically, you will try to align the sensor parallel to the central grooves of the molars in the molar bite wing. Here's an example of what happens when the sensor is not parallel to the lingual surfaces of the teeth. All of the overlapping contacts are closed because the sensor was not placed correctly.
Sometimes you'll need to take vertical bite wings so that both maxillary and mandibular bone levels can be captured adequately. In this horizontal bite wing, the mandibular bone level is missing. In a vertical bite wing, bone levels would be featured. Keep in mind which image it is that you are attempting and use the notch in the red platform to position the sensor between the molars or the premolars that you would like to image. This will help you to position the sensor properly in the arch. This is Dr. Lin Wong, and her tip for better bite wings is the smile technique. Just looked at this bite wing, and another problem with it is that the lower premolars are not imaged adequately. In order to properly position the sensor and holder for the premolar bite wing, you can verify that the sensor is properly placed by having the patient give you a big smile with the teeth together. If you squat down and look through the plastic circle, you'll see which teeth will be imaged. This is much harder to do if you're standing up straight, especially if you are tall or if the chair's not raised up. But if you use this tip, it is possible to obtain bite wing x-rays that look like these. You'll notice that it's not always possible to open all of the contacts at the same time due to tooth position and arch curvature. But if between the premolar and molar bite wings you can see what you need to see, you'll be covered. This is Willie, one of our radiology techs. He's going to show you how to open contacts on bite wings. First, you can identify the area you would like to see better by pointing through the contacts with your finger. You can see that this angle may be different from the angle shown by the metal rod. You can also use a Q-tip to trace the contact and line up the central beam of the x-ray tube head with the Q-tip to help you get the best angulation. You can also do this with a piece of floss. This is June, another of our radiology technicians. June's trick for opening contacts is to use a 10 degree downward angle. As before, you'll be deviating from what the metal rod indicates and you will no longer be parallel to it. Remember to keep the collimator aligned with the sensor in the middle of the plastic circle or you'll get a cone cut on your image. The angle for opening up molar contacts is first to try from the mesial and for premolar contacts from the distal. The 10 degree downward angle compensates for the lingual inclination of the lower teeth and really opens up contacts more easily. This is Dr. Ella Madavi. She would like to tell you how to manage tori when you're taking bite wing x-rays is flexible and thin, so it may have advantages in these situations. The rigid digital sensor will not distort your images, however. For smaller tori, try to maneuver the sensor under the tongue and have the patient close very slowly. A vertical position of the sensor may be helpful, especially in the premolar area. If you attempt to position the sensor as you normally would, you may find that the patient cannot close completely. But if you place the sensor farther toward the middle of the mouth and ask the patient to close very slowly, you can often see the patient fully closed on the x-rays. Christina's tip is to remind you to be careful with the digital sensor. When your gloves or the sensor barriers are wet with saliva, they can become slippery. At that point, it is easy to drop the digital sensor, especially when you are changing the position of the sensor holder. When the sensor is dropped, the ceramic coating of the sensor can develop a crack that allows saliva or other fluids to affect the electronic elements inside the sensor. The images taken by that sensor will start to degrade, as shown by this radiograph. Christina wants to remind you to go easy, breathe, and don't drop the sensor while you are taking your images. Dr. Miriam Robbins and all of the radiology faculty and staff are here to assist you with taking images as well as interpreting them. Good images are integral to good treatment plans and good care of your patients.